So we've heard about new ways of working and working collaboratively across subjects and new ways of meeting student needs. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce our third presenter who will um, describe for us how music can inform and en the curriculum and engage uh, students. Please join me in welcoming Ben Letty from Excel Academy Charter School in Orient Heights. When I was seven, something changed my life. I possessed a superhuman power that no one could take away from me. This is what I learned. Alabama, Alaska, Arizona, Arkansas, <laughs> California, Colorado, Connecticut. With this little song, the 50 Nifty United States, I could name all 50 states in alphabetical order. And it stuck with me for nearly 20 years. So when I started teaching fifth grade social studies, I knew I would use songs in my classroom. But I felt like the song was lacking something. I mean, it's a wonderful song, but how many times in my life had I ever needed to know the states in alphabetical order? <laughs> I wanted a song that would do something more for my students. So I wrote one. It's called Tap the Map. And instead of going in alphabetical order, it goes in geographic order. Take a look. Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, New York, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, and Maryland, Pennsylvania to the north. And then it's west, Virginia, and Virginia to north and south Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky. <laughs> So with this song, Tap the Map, students could identify all 50 states using a blank map. It took about a minute to sing. The kids really loved it. But did it stick? Well, the kids in that video are now a year older. It's been a year since they sang the song or I taught about the 50 states. So I gave them a blank map, a list of the states, and I asked them to match as many of them as they could. The student average 14 months later was 37 states correctly identified. For students who hadn't learned the song, it was 13 states. And looking a little bit closer, nearly a quarter of students knew all the states, nearly half could say 45 or more, and nearly 75% knew 30 or more of the states. But they also outperformed adults. <laughs> In 2006, National Geographic did a survey of 18 to 24 year olds and asked them to identify seven states on a blank map. With the exception of California, the sixth graders in blue outperformed the 18 to 24 year olds in every category. So what's the big idea here? It's not that songs are a great teaching tool. We, we already know this. But that there is untapped potential for songs in the classroom. And that by rethinking the way that we use songs, we have an opportunity to deepen students' understanding, build students' vocabulary, and reach students with varied learning needs. So first, I want to share what this approach looks like and what it looks like in practice. Then I'll discuss some of the benefits of this approach. So first, what is this approach? I call it SAM songs, S-A-M, which stands for Say, Act, and Move. Basically, it's a method for writing songs that ensure effective learning for students. And I'd like to illustrate it with an example. This year, I was teaching my students about no taxation without representation. Now, there's a lot to get here the words taxation and representation, which are pretty abstract for fifth graders, and the context, who's giving this tax, to who, and why. So I wrote a song. My name is King George Will you give me money, pay the debt for the war? No taxation without representation Don't take my money if I don't have a say All right, 
So let's break this down a little bit. First of all, what are students saying? Well, there's the context. Uh, King George is giving the tax to the colonists to pay for the French and Indian War. And then we have the phrase followed by the definition. But notice the structure. It's no taxation without representation. Don't take my money if I don't have a say. Now, um, how are students acting? Well, we're taking sides. I'm King George walking around for the first part, and the students respond as the colonists. And when they respond, they get into it. <laughs> Like, they put their arms together. They, like, turn away. Some of them, they, like, they do, like, the finger wag. So the students are taking on the colonist's point of view, not just memorizing it. And how are students moving? Here are the moves that they do. No taxation without representation. So not only is it, like, a fun dance move, but it reinforces the meaning of those words, especially helpful for English language learners. So, uh, what are the benefits of these songs? First, and most importantly, they're inclusive. A little bit of context. These are some of my fifth graders. Um, about one in four students coming to the fifth grade at Excel receive special education services. Most students speak a language other than English at home, and most students arrive reading behind grade level. So the challenge is, how do you honor every student's needs in a whole classroom setting? And for me, these songs are the answer. Because maybe one student really needs to do those motions. And another student needs to repeat the vocabulary. And maybe another student got it more quickly, but they're reinforcing what they already know. Everyone gets what they need, and everyone is included. I had one student, um, attention challenges, moves a lot in class, and was an English language learner. And a year later, he could name all 50 states. Imagine how many students we could be reaching with songs. Now. The second benefit, it's student-centered. Now, I know as a teacher, many forms of teaching take a lot of time and materials. Flashcards, study guides, an elaborate Jeopardy PowerPoint review game. <laughs> the thing is, it exhausts teachers, and it also keeps the students dependent on those materials. But with songs, all you need are the words and the motions. And once you know those, you don't need anything else. It saves time and materials for teachers. It allows the teacher to focus more on the student, and the students can practice anytime and anywhere, which leads into the third benefit. The songs are shareable. I put many of my songs on YouTube so that my students can practice at home. So before a test, I'll tell the kids, hey, I put up a new song. You know, let's get it up to 1,000 views. We're going to make it go viral. The kids go, yeah. And so they think they're doing me a favor when really... They're studying. I had one girl told me she watched one of the songs 15 times in a row on the bus ride to school. Another student said that they showed it to a family member who's studying for a citizenship exam. So you may have one of two concerns. First of all, singing isn't really your thing. Or teachers are doing most of the thinking and not the students. If I'm writing all the songs, it's not asking a lot of cognitively demanding work of my students. Well, for both these problems, I have a solution. What if the kids write the songs? So to test this out, I taught my current sixth graders the Sam songwriting method. We happened to be studying India at the time, so I asked them to write a song answering this question. Why is the Ganges River so important to Indians? They read about the river, they got into groups, and here are the results. Oh, the Ganges River, it is important to us. We practice free religion and there is no fuss. We use the water to clean our clothes and for our crops to grow. We take baths in it and so do other people. Oh. We melt down. We melt down. We form a river. We form a river. Wait, shares that ice comes, ice blocks. This one's them Himalayas, them Himalayas, straight masterpieces. You know, I said, India is cool, India be praying. How about that goddess? She be so modest. There's a fire starting up in space. It is melting while the snow in the mountain range. The water is tumbling, it's making people say, Let's go to Ganges and swim the night away. The Himalayas, they melt down. They create the river that flows throughout the town. And when I wake up, I'm soaking weak. Cause you got me bathing, bathing, and you're so sweet. 
I gotta get up, give my blessings, or else I'll have myself stressing in front of Mama Ganga. Ooh, River. Uh, by the way, after that activity, I had the students fill out a survey uh, saying whether they think that writing songs help them to learn better. Nine out of ten students said yes. It's really hard to get nine out of ten middle schoolers to agree on anything. <laughs> so, in closing, there is a power to songs. And I think that we've barely tapped their potential for the classroom. By rethinking the way that we use songs, we can reach more learners more effectively. And you'll have more moments like this. I'll leave you with a song. Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, Nevada, Nevada, California, Alaska, and Hawaii. And the capital is Washington, D.C. Thank you.